Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Morning, everybody. All right, Saturday morning, so you know how it goes. No video on Sunday. You'll see me again on Monday. And as usual, lots to cover. Let's jump in and get there, shall we? Let's go. To start with, the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, uh, officially opened a maternity theater at Bradford Royal Infirmary. Very nice. Anne was taken on a tour of the facility. She saw the operating rooms. She saw the entire complex. She met with the doctors and the nurses. And, um, you know, looks like she had a great time there. She unveiled a plaque, which is standard protocol. And then she received some flowers from a beautiful little girl there. All right. Now, at some point during the day, I don't know if it was before or after the hospital, Princess Anne went to the University of Huddersfield, and she went there to address the 92nd Textile World Conference, because the theme for this year was sustainability, which we all know is a subject that is very close to Anne's heart. So good for her. She looks fabulous. I love the color green on her. So still talking about Anne, when she was at the Textile Institute World Conference, people noticed the shirt that was popped underneath her collar and come to find out that it is a shirt that she had worn in 1992. I find it amazing that she still fits into the clothing. I could never fit into any of my clothing from 1992. That's just crazy. Next up, on July 4th, during the service of Thanksgiving, or while that was taking place, Princess Anne also visited Strathcarran Hospice, where she met patient staff and supporters and was given a tour of a new extension that had just been added to make room for more patients. Very nice. Now, still sticking with Princess Anne, the Princess Royal, she attended the beating retreat ceremony, the same thing Sophie did, but it was for the household division military. And let's not forget she's colonel of this. So yeah, all right, nicely done. All right, moving on from Princess Anne to her daughter, Zara. She attended a garden party with Mike. She looked absolutely stunning in her black uh, mini dress. It was a uh, Rebecca Valance. It was one shoulder, and it can be purchased for 473 pounds. Very nice. Next up, Prince Andrew popped up. He's been out and about horse riding on the Royal Lodge estate. And apparently all talk of him moving out of the Royal Lodge has been halted for the moment because, of course, Fergie is recovering at home since the mastectomy. So, of course, right now is just not a good time to be discussing that. We know as part of his lease agreement, he has agreed to cover the cost of refurbishments and he has already put in a lot of his own money into the property. Now, moving on to Fergie, they gave an update on her surgery. Come to find out the surgery was much more involved than usual. The surgery was over eight hours long. She sent out her thanks to the two surgeons who did the surgery on her, who operated on her. And a big thank you to the medical team. Um, hopefully they got it all. Hmm. All right, moving on. All right, let's move on to Princess Eugenie, who put up a Instagram post uh, that essentially says she has joined the Goals House Advisory Board. And uh, this is a place, goals for sustainable things, uh, for by, and they want to reach them by 2030. So... What it says is, and I'm quoting straight from it, Goals House is a community of internationally renowned activists, thinkers, political figures, business leaders, and entrepreneurs that come together at significant global moments throughout the year, united in the drive to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. I think that's very nice. Now, we know Eugenie works full-time at an art gallery, but she said that since she's had children, she it has impacted her desire to do more and it's changed her priorities no very good all right moving on 
All right, I couldn't remember if I reported on this or not, so I'm putting it in again. The Duke and Duchess of Gloucester went to the Bristol Museum last week and marked two anniversaries. They went on a tour of the museum. They got to watch a Chinese dance. Um, yeah, again, older Duke and Duchess, but still out there doing their do. Love it. Moving on. All right, next up, Edward. Now, I told you guys already that the Duke of Edinburgh, hope I'm saying that, I'm trying, you guys, visits the Royal Lyceum Theater, I think is how you say it, but you know how I am. More pictures came out, so of course I have to show them because last time I think I only had like two pictures to show you, and this time, yeah, there you go. This theater is located in Edinburgh, Oh, hope that's better. And um, Edward met young performers from a group called The Summer on the Stage, which I think is just lovely. Definitely gives the kids something to do. You know what, I'm, you know what I mean? So they're not getting into trouble. Moving on. All right, I just wanted to touch on this article. Apparently, a man walked up to the gates at Buckingham Palace in central London at about uh, 5.30 p.m. our time in the United States, and he handcuffed himself to the gates, and then he threatened to hurt himself. The police did confirm that he had a number of self-inflicted slash injuries to his arms, so the police at the time cleared the scene of tourists, and, you know, they took care of the situation. Moving on. We're going to go on to Harry and Meghan now. We're going back to the wedding. Remember, um, when Harry got married, his friend um, Jack Mann was one of his best men. But when Jack got married, Harry wasn't there. I still feel personally that he wasn't there because he wasn't invited. Now, the article says, we don't know if Jack is estranged from Harry. But in Harry's memoirs, he talks about how his friends chastised him after the Oprah interview um, that he did a lot of damage. And so there's been a lot of fallout and his friends were genuinely, quote unquote, disgusted by what he did since he left the royal family. So essentially, not all of his friends have stood by him. Now, when I say his friends didn't stand by him, of course, I am talking about the friends that were left over after Meghan separated Harry from all of his friends. All right, moving on. Do you guys remember it was the second Christmas and I think the last Christmas that Megan spent with the family and she was obviously trying to get William's attention. William wasn't having any of it. And of course, they tried to make it look like nothing was going on. So let's just go back and look at that. First of all, somebody yelled at Megan. She had to look over and then she had to turn around and look again and, you know, whisper, thank you, whatever, as they walked into church. Now, here they are coming out, and it's pretty obvious that Megan is attempting to have some sort of a conversation, as you can see, with, I don't know, William, with Catherine. It wasn't working. She turned around. Catherine's talking to somebody else. William's playing with his scarf. He doesn't want to acknowledge her. That's very obvious. And, and Harry's just there. If you look at Harry, he's just like paying no attention to anything. So anyway, they get to the very bottom. William is as far away from her as he can get. And then look what happens. Megan looks at him and tries to speak and look at William's face. He's just staring at her. Yep. All right, you guys, an article came out that said that Harry really is now attempting to avoid the spotlight. Uh, he's requested privacy, but this time, apparently, he means it. <laughs> He really wants to be left alone. Uh, very interesting. He's not in the celebrity circles. He's not going to the parties with Megan. Uh, interest, you know what? Every time I see this picture with the intrepid, it infuriates me. Do you guys remember this? This was an American awards banquet on an American ship. And Megan wasn't supposed to be there. It was when she wore that horrible red dress with the honey bun chest on it. Anyway, it was an American awards banquet on an American ship, and he had the woman sing God Save the Queen. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, he's going solo to Africa for the documentary. I think he's trying to get away from her. Hmm. And that all makes sense because a blind item came out basically saying that Megan sent Harry home from a party because he was annoying her. I, I have no trouble believing that. Isn't that terrible? 
All right, next up, this was sent to me by somebody on Twitter saying, talking about the American Friends of the Royal Foundation. Uh, it was found by Sumi. And so I looked online and what this, this is the American arm of the Royal Foundation. But apparently the way it worked was 2018, Harry was involved and Harry wrote this note and apparently they just haven't removed it. Personally, I think they should get on there because like Sumi saw it and she immediately backed away. So would I. I'm not giving money to anything Harry's name is on. All right, moving on. You know they want you to think that Megan is the Diana incarnate. Well, I think they want people to think that their daughter is too. Have you guys gone back and looked at the Netflix documentary? Do you guys remember this? Harry says, she's very Spencer-like. She has these blue eyes and Megan goes, oh yes, blue, blue, blue eyes. He says, oh yes, she has the same golden hair with the highlights. And then there's this music playing in the background and there's Diana toddling around. And the music's something like, when I think of you, you know, this, the music swells. It's like, yeah, whatever. All right, let's move on now to some other stuff about the kids. You know, I put a post on Twitter and I pointed out something, but I'm going to do it again on here. First of all, here you have Lily on Harry's shoulders. You can't see her face. You can't see Archie's face. And Megan is looking at the girl and she has brown hair. Here's another picture. Now Lily is blonde. You can't see Lily's face. You can't see Archie's face. And Megan is only looking at the girl. Then I pointed out this picture. There is no Archie. There is simply a child who now has red hair, which is completely different again. So when I put that out, somebody else pointed out exact same thing for Archie. Here he is after the Oprah show on the beach dark hair. Here he is older, dark curly hair. Here he is in the chicken coop, red hair. Unbelievable. And then here he is up from the Christmas card where by the way, they're, everybody's looking at the little girl and she has red hair. He has red hair again. And then resting doll face pointed out that in another picture taken by somebody else, Archie has dark hair again. Amazing. But what I said and what I meant was that I'm so sick of hearing about these kids and every picture they put out is photoshopped. It's not real. So I thought I'd be excited to see the kids, but instead I'm not. I could care less if I see them again. And other people, as you can see from these tweets, feel exactly the same way. Now, talking about the constant photoshopping and manipulation, this Twitter user decided to go back and do a little investigation, and here's what they found. Looks like this car participated in 2011 and 2015. There's nothing on their website that says that this car participated in a parade in 2023. These pictures are apparently from the other parades that they were involved in. Now let's look at some other stuff. Remember this picture that was taken on the side of the road? Well, then a video came out that showed them there on the side of the road. So I decided to take a closer look. Okay, so here's the video in slow motion. Here they are passing and you can clearly see on the right, there's Megan kneeling down with a little girl in front of her. You see everybody's waving, hello, hello, here we are. Okay, now here's the interesting part. Here is the picture that was taken from the side of the road. Pay close attention. There's Harry to the right. There's Archie next to the two little girls. You see the big guy in the blue shirt next to Harry and you see the big guy in the white shirt behind Megan. Here's the screenshot from the car that went by. The big guy is behind Megan. The guy in the blue shirt is next to Harry. So the two differences are Archie's missing. Suddenly he's not there. And there's a guy standing next to Harry between him and the guy in the blue shirt who was not there in the previous picture. So it's pretty obvious the guy in the blue and the guy in the white shirt, the two big guys are security. So who got Archie? Everybody else is still standing there that was there initially. Where did Archie go? 
Or was he ever really there in the first place? Mm -hmm. And just to make sure they get credit, this is the person who posted that video. Now, finally, I wanna show you this because I have said this before. If Harry was a woman and some divorced man came along, married her, separated her from her family and her friends, moved her to another country, the world would be screaming from the rooftops abuse. But because the roles were reversed, nobody cared. How many times have you guys heard me say that? Well, here's another person that thinks exactly the way that I do and said the exact same thing. All right, here we go. Um, Finn update. So I got out of bed, um, I go to get some coffee, and he literally tucked himself in on my side, and I showed you before he likes to shove his nose under the blankets. I, I'm not sure what that's about, but um, you know me, I grabbed the camera and took some video. Watch this. All right, you guys, you know what I want. Put those comments down and make them good. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you've already hit it, double check, make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget to go into the description box and get the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, and my physical address in case there's something you want to send. For those of you who've donated to my coffee fund or through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.